What's up, y'all? It's your boy, the Anim2 Kudus at African Geek. Welcome to my channel. About to talk about a few series right now. This is series catch up. I've watched a lot of these probably months ago, some of them, or like a month or so ago. And I've been wanting to make a review about it. It's been stuck in my head. I have to take out these thoughts about these series. Some are not that old, but anyway, I'm just gonna dive right in. The first one is Luke Cage Season 2. I think of this season as a, uh, an homage to legacy. A lot of them had, you know, relationships about the like the family relationships were a main focus in this. Like the Stokes family, Bushmaster's family, and Luke's family. Like all those families came to the forefront of the season. You know what I'm saying? Misty was more about acceptance. She was cool with the robot hand and Colleen was fantastic helping her out. Oh, Jessica's so fine though. That's, that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the season was phenomenal. I do have some nitpicky stuff about it that I didn't like. So many sitting down conversations. You know, normally they use that conference room. You know what I'm saying? The police station. No, <laughs> in all these shows, like, but this time they just sat everywhere. The Dan, Ra Danny Rand building and the, the bubble shop, like it was character building conversations. But they sat down a lot, you know. Danny's appearance this, in the season was phenomenal. They team up. The heroes for hire. A glimpse of that was amazing. Probably would have been cooler to see more of it. You know what I'm saying? See, tease more in the future. Uh, he, I heard Luke's not going to be in Iron Fist 2, which is a bummer, but it's understandable. At least we got Misty there also. See her and Colleen. They need to give them a separate show or like a separate adventure, you know what I'm saying? To give the female side of the Defenders more of a shine. See that Jessica has the shine so far. I really like the season. Mariah's daughter was phenomenal. The relationship was dynamic, was just rocky as hell. Uh, Shades was cooler this season. His relationship with his best friend made his character have depth that I didn't think it, it had. It makes me want to see more of him. Talk about Bushmaster. Phenomenal villain and constant. I love how constant this story was. You know what I'm saying? They really fixed up season one. This was a constant story. It was a good story. Hope Bushmaster also comes back, you know what I'm saying? Like Shades also won. I hope he comes back. They didn't kill him, he just went to prison. But you know what I'm saying? This is a corrupt world. I'm pretty sure Shades can get out. You know what I'm saying? The shocking ending though. Can we talk about that? The shocking ending though with Luke. You know, decided, yo, somebody gotta lead. Like put the division with all these bad people around New York make Harlem, you know, Harlem paradise the chill zone, he had to become one of the bad guys that was a twist, an interesting twist, I wonder how they are gonna partake that going forward, like that was just a moment that was like whoa, big ups, did not see that coming, you know what I'm saying give them props for that one, that was unexpected Anyway, second series on the list. Wait, let me give Luke Casey's two a rating. I give it an 8 out of 10. It was, it was constant. Like I said, it was good. Get out of 8 out of 10. Deserves that much. Okay, the second series is Cloak and Dagger. Covered the first two episodes. I, I talked about how I felt like the show was needed to be benched. Still feel that way, but it was a phenomenal show. It was cheap at some points. That was... The only nitpicky part I had about it. The conversations were so important. That's why I don't fault the show. The show was phenomenal. Tandy and Tyrone both had arguments that just blew your mind. And they could come to a common interest at the end. Like, be Cloak and Dagger. And be the heroes New Orleans needed. Goddamn, I'm so glad I got a second season. This was, this was a great show. This was a great show. Everybody else was phenomenal. That detective woman, I forgot her name. I forgot her name real quick. I'm 
trying to see if I can find it right now on my laptop. But she was cool too. That fridging moment she had to deal with when they fridged her boyfriend. She was starting to be comfortable and happy. New Orleans. She even name dropped Misty. Misty, is she gonna be the new R Roseanne Dawson connecting all these shows together? I wonder if it's gonna connect to the runaway before the Netflix shows. Yeah, probably. I mean, the runaways are running away. They probably will find themselves in New Orleans or something. Uh, what's her name? Detective O'Reilly. Detective O'Reilly. That's what her name was. Also, Tyrone's girlfriend. What was her name? Yvette. Yvette was also interesting. Her whole, you know, spiritual background. Like the folklore of New Orleans. I heard that they were really truthful when it, when it came to that. I wonder if we'll see Liam again. Tandy's boyfriend, such. Mina was also cool. Um, who else was there? Detective Connors. He had one of the best moments, in, well, two of the best moments in the show for me. When Cloak first wore the cloak and started disappearing everywhere. And another moment is when Cloak took him in to that dimension of his. That so I got no cloak and dagger from the Spider Man Ultimate Spider Man show and a bunch of other animations. That's how I know them. So the way they use their powers at first I was like, Oh, it's not like the cartoon but they started using it more like the cartoon which I really liked. That was my only take from it. I didn't even know the backstory from the cartoon, so I couldn't even judge it towards the comics. I don't know the comics were cloaking better, but it was a phenomenal. Look forward to seeing the Johnson family more. Uh, Bowen family. Yo, the father twist was like crazy. Can we all agree on that twist? I never saw that shit coming. God damn, I won't lie. I never saw that shit coming, but it was fantastic. I give it a 9 out of 10. It was phenomenal. Like I said, I only knew picky thing that was cheap and I feel like it should be benched. Like, the runaways know what's up. They gave us like four episodes on the jump, then they gave us one by one, but now they're giving us all of them. They know what's up. Ah, the next show on the chopping block is Close Season 2. Season 2 was phenomenal. We touched on a lot of topics, y'all. We had some Me Too moments. They had some female empowerment moments. They had some, you know, never give up attitude. I mean, Ruth really shined this season. Like, they villainized her in season one, but made her, you know, like, they humanized and villainized her, you know what I'm saying? They made her do such a bad thing to Debbie's character, you know? Like, such a bad thing. Then she grew this season. She, was, she loved it so much. And everybody could see it from Carmen when she said it. Uh, Cherry, even Justine, just uh, Ruth and what's Justine's name? Sam's relationship is phenomenal. That's a guy and girl relationship I want. Like, it's no fucks given. They even had a powerful episode with Tammy. Uh, what's her name? What's her wrestling name? The, the woman that talks about food stamps and everything. When she had a son come back from college. They had a touching moment. That was just so sad. Like, like this show is so grounded in humanity. It's so amazing. Also, when Ruth got hurt, how they all banded together for her. It's beautiful. This show is great. And just recently got reviewed for season three, which I'm so excited. So excited for. Uh, she Wolf, fantastic. I mean, like, if you haven't watched Glow, you are missing out. This is one of the best shows out right now. Anyway. Give this show a legit an 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10. But some moments where I'm like, okay. Like, they keep getting bad. Like, hits. Like, the Me Too movement thing. When Debbie basically told her you should have taken it. It's just like, oh man. You know what I'm saying? Just heart grenching. And it's real life, I understand that. But, you know what I'm saying? Not a country. Like, confrontational person so those type of moments made me feel iffy it's not the show's fault it's my fault so 
anyway, and the fact that the director knew that a bunch of people wanted the show, not the director, the head of the studio, wanted the show and was still willing to pocket it just to make a statement like, yo, your sleep will be, I uh, destroy your show. I was so jacked up. Like, can we agree on how jacked up that shit was? Ah, oh, like, just makes me mad. <laughs> That's why. It gets an A. I'm joking. I'm joking. It didn't get an A because of that. there was some, you know, problem. Like, some characters did not grow whatsoever. That type of thing. Oh my god, Cherry was so bad at acting. <laughs> In that cop show, that was hilarious. So I couldn't stop cracking up. She was so mad. Oh, at least she's amazing here. In Arrow, she pissed me off. 